Meanwhile, has anyone actually studied the real case concerning the Batman shootings? Well, John Bounds has been following the evidence, and he's got some pretty important connections about how they never even followed up on the other reports of other shooters, yet it made the police scanners, witnesses at the theater, all brought this issue up. But it's not good enough for the police chief. Let's roll that footage now. Police Chief Dan Oates issues this immediate public statement claiming there is just one shooter. Every single indicator is that this was this is all Mr. Holmes's activity and that he wasn't particularly aided by anyone else. This is the same police chief that presided over a blatant violation of the Fourth Amendment by illegally cuffing and detaining 40 innocent people, including women and children, for over two hours while looking for a bank robber. Early on, the police scanner supports the one-shooter theory. 16 Adam, I need a marked car behind the theater table side. The suspect in a gas mask. 209, okay, and we need cars south side. Suspect in a gas mask. The mainstream media promotes the one-shooter theory. And honestly, for the record, there was only one guy. Yes, actually, the shooting probably started, like, lasted probably for like about a minute or two. But according to the police scanner, another suspect is spotted just three minutes later. 321, one of the shooters might be wearing a white and blue plaid shirt. Copy outstanding shooter possibly wearing a white and blue plaid shirt. He had his foot propped open by the door and from the crack it looked like he was signaling somebody or looking for somebody to come his way. From what we saw, he wasn't alone. He had someone with him uh, because the, the second can of tear gas didn't come from his side. Um, he was completely dressed in, in black, head to toe. From what we saw, it seemed like he had something over his face, probably to prevent him from breathing it in. And I, we can only assume that someone got him in because he was hit, whatever he was wearing seemed thick. So I don't think he would really, I think he'd stand out in the crowd. The one shooter theory loses even more credibility when a second gas mask is discovered. How is it possible that 12 people were killed and 58 were injured by a semi-automatic weapon that jammed? He shot easily like 60 or 70 rounds. Then there's the official story given by the president himself concerning the blood path behind the theater. Obama claims that this wound spilled what appears to be buckets of blood. In the aftermath, the vulture media swoops in. Misquoting Holmes' mother regarding the shooting, causing her to issue this statement. I did not know anything about a shooting in Aurora at that time. He asked if I was Arlene Holmes and if my son was James Holmes, who lives in Aurora, Colorado. I answered, yes, you have the right person. Holmes' father worked for San Diego-based HNC Software Incorporated, a company that worked with DARPA to develop Cortronic Neural Networks. These enable machines to translate oral and visual stimuli and simulate human thinking. And Holmes' grandfather had deep ties into the intelligence framework of the U.S. military. The children of people with similar backgrounds are highly susceptible to exposure to monarch mind control. Using brainwashed patsies in PSYOP massacres has become a commonplace thread in American history as the shadow government strengthens its stranglehold on public perception. Instead of really digging into why this apartment would be rigged to kill, but then Holmes would then warn police and then lawyer up and not say anything else, where he got the funding and the firearms training and these eyewitness reports that there was more than one person, yeah, instead of asking those questions, national media want to focus all their attention on why guns were legal in the first place. Now is the time to shine a light on the obvious motive behind this tragic event, the motive to pass the United Nations Treaty on Small Arms. John Bound, InfoWars Nightly News.